they need to do to achieve the two degrees goal and grow at their you know projected economic growth rates is reduce carbon intensity by 6.3 percent a year you really need to have a major revolution in all sectors in all countries every decade to 2050 and beyond and that was really the reason that we first question whether or not the two degrees target was really viable. I strongly believe that you can set up new businesses on this new basis. I mean, uh, it's not because you need to stop to consider you can pollute that you cannot generate new businesses. On the contrary, I would say, I mean that precisely on the basis of these new perspectives uh, financial institutions know that they will have to fund some new ventures around these kind of new technologies. So it opens room for entrepreneurs to create new companies on new business models. Uh, offshore wind, for example, it's a technology that didn't exist in Europe, of, in the world actually, in a few, just a few years ago. It's picking up today and it's actually leading to new industrial capacity. Uh, you take the French firm uh, Alstom, now G for the power uh, branch. Uh, I mean, the, the first time that they actually created a factory in France since 20 years was to manufacture these wind turbines for, for offshore. Mm, the oil companies are still engaged in a business as usual attitude. They say, and to some degree this is true, that the developing world will need a lot of energy, a lot of fuels in order to lift itself out of poverty. They envision that that will be provided by traditional oil and gas sources when the imperative of climate science tells us that if that happens, we will be committed to very, very large temperature increases and massive disruptions in the world's ecosystems. So it's, it's a challenge because of the politics of oil, because there's many parts in California where the city's economy is based on oil. Their taxes, they get it from oil. The jobs are from oil. So it's an achievable goal, but sometimes it's difficult because if you're not transitioning those jobs and training people to be able to get a job in a newer economy, maybe a biofuel facility, um, we're not going in the right direction. So we, we do realize we're going to have to outsmart them. Um, one thing that we're doing regarding oil is one, creating more fuel efficient cars, obviously, but I'm a huge proponent of creating alternative fuels to give them some competition in the marketplace. Maybe the proper incentives would direct motorists or other consumers of oil products to use cleaner, less carbon intensive fuels. The automobile companies are also producing zero emission vehicles. In, to comply with a mandate that California and seven other states have set. 20 years ago, they ferociously resisted that requirement, said consumers won't buy those cars. Now they're producing multiple models of those cars, and they recognize that there's a real economic benefit to doing so over the long term. Innovation is the key to addressing climate change. And we've seen a, a host of announcements made over the last week of the COP around funding for innovation of clean technology. It, it, it's really a chain of innovation where you see in the first stages, where you need in the first stages a lot of government involvement, government support. And then afterwards, it shifts to, I think, the private R&D efforts. And again, if you take, you know, electric vehicles, that's again a good example where you do need a government push at the start to, to really to catalyze and make sure that the, the market uh, starts and that you have the market uptake that you want. 
And I think what's encouraging is that we're now seeing, you know, electric vehicles that people really want to drive. You know, they're really desirable. That's important because um, low carbon technology really needs to be desirable for, you know, the rapid uptake that is needed. Well, I think, um, however you describe it, business will be at the leading edge in terms of delivering on those INDCs. You know, most of the investment uh, in low carbon technology is from the private sector. Sort of some say it's over 80%. Uh, obviously, it won't be reached uh, if companies don't adhere to this target. So it means that this target needs to be to be transcripted for each company so as that it's become a goal for uh, each large company obviously but also to for for some some uh, smaller companies or to some activities which mainly are not for profits but need to integrate these targets within their own operations government and business need to work together such that you've got the right regulatory environment in place so that that investment flows in down that low carbon pathway, I suppose. Uh -huh.